Team Sion to mid lane. Team Tank. And here we are, picks and bans for game three. GE Tigers versus KT Rolster. And GE, of course, you know, they've locked up first place in the league right now. Technically, they don't need to win this match. However, I think they don't want to uh, have that great score and one, you know? <laughs> and that one to be to KT Rolster, too. Yeah. That's a little iffy. So, same bans from. KT so far this game. We now the, a big mix up. Lissandra available, Rek'Sai available this game. I think the Thresh and uh, Aurelia bands are pretty solid versus KT though, especially you have to get rid of that Thresh. But you know, some days played a pretty good Aurelia today too. Yeah, he, de he definitely has. Yeah, worthy of a ban for sure. So the final ban for KT, they're going to ban that Rumble. So they will give the Rek'Sai to Lee. If GE wants to take it, we'll see if it's another first pick Shazwani, but with Rek'Sai up, I don't think you do that. Yeah, I think you take the Rek'Sai yeah. here, absolutely, but there's a lot of stuff up. We've talked about how successful uh, KT Rolster has been with that Lissandra. They've won the overwhelming majority of their games with that champion. Also, the first time Maokai has not been banned, so they could just go ahead and take Maokai. Lissandra right here, they will take the Shazwani instead. Of course, there is still a danger in that top lane Rek'Sai that has been appearing well, a lot more in solo queue. This also gives Kuro Lissandra if they want to, or Smeb Lissandra too. I mean, yeah, they, not ha they have to take the Lissandra here, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you're KT, do you need to take the Sejuani? I feel like taking Maokai Lissandra, even though it gives away your solo lanes, would have been a bit stronger. Ooh. But oh no, they're taking away the Cassiopeia. Interesting. All right, they can still pick up the Lissandra. We'll see if they do that for Nagne. This is not a champion that we've seen Kuro play not yet not yet so a bit of a different look from him he, he's been pulling out a few new champions in recent weeks of course victor is banned on this patch so yep unavailable sadly oh man i really hope kt doesn't play the zareth that has not really gone well for them they're gonna the do past. it they're gonna play the zareth it's really been a weak pick for nagne and one other problem here, yes, oh, Diana has okay. been much better for him. It's, I think it's well suited to his play style. Yeah. We'll see a bit of a reverse matchup from what we saw in the last game. So if he can make it through lane. Oh, Zed, Nagne, obviously has played plenty of Zed as well too. Any assassin, Nagne generally does quite well on. And he's gonna bring it against Kuro's Cassiopeia. First time we've seen Zed here in Korea in yeah. quite a while. All right, well, there's some shields that will come in from Gorilla's Janna then. And who are they going to pick up as AD carry? Okay, Kogma, of course. So finally, GE getting serious. Going to run the Juggermaw. And so what's that last pick? What's the support going to be for KT? Fixer has defaulted to Leona when Thresh wasn't available. Janna not available either. I think, historically speaking, we're going to see that Leona. But Annie... Yeah. Gonna work quite, quite well there, actually. Yeah, they really need that engage right now. So yeah. tons of hard engage on the side of KT. A significant amount of peel from the GE Tigers. They will have that kite ability of that Cassiopeia with the high damage as well. So nice mixed damage threats right here. Although Age is still gonna be pretty good because Kog'Maw does put out magic damage percent HP with his bio arcane barrage I think this will be a good game because we really can we have the potential to see both teams at their best this game you know yeah tons of engage from KT lots of ability to push it under tower someday always been a good Maokai player and GE playing the comp that they invented this juggernaut strategy with the Lulu in the top lane and peel for the Kogma and the Kogma front line so GE once again playing a game without a tanky top laner. We'll see if they can pull it off a little bit better, see if that coordination is there this time around. Certainly having that Kog'Maw at 2v2 with the Sivir at least will poke very heavily early, even if it will be vulnerable to an all-in at six. I feel like that Maokai is gonna be kind of scary in the late game. We'll see if GE can deal with that. This may slow Cassiopeia down a little bit too with an arm guard first. Yeah. May not be able to be as greedy with the tier. Well, we'll see who takes the GE versus KT all tied up. Game number three starts now. Here we are. G 
GE Tigers versus KT Rolster. And we're in game three. KT, they took a game off of SK Telecom. Took a game off of the GE Tigers now. But they still have those big, big holes in their play as a team. Luckily for them, this is the type of composition that they've been getting those wins with. So might actually be a pretty decent test for the GE Tigers. Right, and GE going back to comfort. Yeah. For this, this composition. Well, you can see they, they don't want to lose this match. You know, they mess around game one, a little bit in game two, but now it's time, apparently, to get serious. Although, uh, Curls Cassiopeia is new. You have not seen him play that yet. Although, not surprised he can play it. It is a champion right up his alley. Yeah. Wow, they're just going to walk right in. Ah, the ward goes down, but another ward from Kuro. Yeah, they're just trying to disrupt the sapling stacking. Yep. Right there in the raptor pit. Make sure that Kuro won't be getting too far behind in the laning phase. Immediately. It's still going to happen, though. Somebody's got to stop this from going on. Well, Smeb could get over and do it. And they do have vision of the... Raptor pit, I believe. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, it they? looks like they see at least one sapling would. there. Yeah. Oh, they're not going to prevent it though. Okay. Just going to allow Nagne to get that little XP boost. That was really one of their primary issues that last game. Oh no, there's three there, so that's actually going go to go to something. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They kind of do it both ways. All right, Gromp again. Two KT's dual lane. Was an issue. Prey only going to take the small Krug once again. So we'll see if they play a little bit more respectfully this time. Yeah. And what KT can do with that level two advantage. Obviously, it's not going to be as big as uh, having both Flay and Death Sentence like it was in the last one. And yes, they are just going to play further back this time. No yep. risks taken by GE. They have learned their lesson. And won't be going for that, so yeah. Fix are not quite having the engaged potential level two that you get with Thresh if the stun isn't up on Annie. Right. But you've still got a lot of good uh, auto attack harass. Yeah, good damage, good damage, but uh, certainly less of a threat. And GE just wanting to play this one a lower risk style and take the, instead of playing aggressively and risking early on, take that winning matchup and right. roll with it between you know, levels one and five. Makes sense. Score taking that Rift Scuttler and River as well, too, trying to keep Arrow and Fixer a little bit safer. Although that seems unsafe, you know? You seem vulnerable, especially against like a Rek'Sai, but he'll get away with it. I'm curious to see how Score runs with the Sejuani, too, just because of the priority on it tonight overall. Uh, again, and, you know, Score. It just hasn't been successful, that successful tonight. We've seen some decent ultimates, particularly by score. Score, I think, had a stronger showing on it in game one. But with that cleanse coming in on Cassiopeia, two games in a row, once for each team. Yeah. Suddenly, it's it's interesting. Suddenly, that Sejuani in all three games in our first match. I wonder if we're going to see more of that in uh, Samsung versus CJ coming up after this. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just more surprising that we didn't see it at all day one, given the strength of that pick right now. Yeah. It's a bit odd. But right now, in this lane, Prey doing a good job of keeping up on CS. Only a couple behind. Oh, get stunned. Nice poke, actually, from KT. Fixer got hit a couple times, too, but you've got those biscuits on the support. You can afford to take a couple hits. Yeah, he certainly can. Lee actually going in for some pretty early deep wards right here. Score is going to use the Raptor buff to eliminate a ward in the river and head right onto the Scuttler in response. Yeah. That'll be Lee. Can they dive this Maokai at this point? Oh, no, probably not. They're a not bit going too dangerous. Yeah. And you don't know if Score is coming into topside at this point or not. Yeah. So it could be risky. They've got a ward out. Somebody has taken some damage. He sees, he's going to see score with his tremor sense, though. So oh, yeah. we'll get out of there immediately. Yeah, a little bit too dangerous. But Smeb putting a lot of harass onto someday early on. CS will be even, though. Fixer, we've just used his stun onto Gorilla, and that's uh, going to allow Prey to come in and do a lot of damage to Arrow, and now to Fixer. Whoops. Yeah, this matchup, until they hit six, and there's actually kill pressure from KT, can't yeah. get 
pretty brutal in favor of the Kogma, just using the, the W to walk forward like that and well, make if those you, very aggressive trades with the additional damage from Eye of the Storm. Yeah, if you use your stun on the support like that, you have to make really sure that your carry <laughs> isn't in position to get just mauled by their carry. Yeah, especially the, an auto AD carry. Oh, oh here we go, we flash stun onto Gorilla. Score coming down as well. Can you get the knockback? Gorilla already flashing. No, there's a flash now. Score gets a slow, though. Gorilla so low in first blood. Taken by Arrow, a successful gank for KT. Nice flash W from Fixer to set that all up. Yeah, a lot of summoners burned, though, on True. the KT Arrow side. And we'll see somebody who's quite low get zoned off the turret as a result. So they're trying to set up an advantage here for Smeb. Yeah, Lee is just going to sit back there and probably help them get more damage onto that turret as Smeb goes back. Actually, Lee's going to go back, too. Okay. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Kuro getting a little bit up on CS over Nagne, but you know, as Zed, you're going to get poked pretty hard by this Cassiopeia. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can farm safely with your shurikens, and you hope yeah. to try and make a play after you hit six. And look at this, Fixer coming up. Now, Fixer doesn't have flash, hmm. so I'm not sure that's actually going to work out for him. And indeed, he veers off into the bottom side jungle. Well, I mean, Cleanse is still up for Cassiopeia, right. too. It's so. virtually impossible to get yeah. a kill right there unless... Sejuani was also in the mid lane, so right. he had that flash, may have been a different story, but just more than likely not going to hit a stun walking up to a Cassiopeia like that. And even if yep. you do, plenty of other ways to get out of there. Smeb pretty well protected up in that top lane with that vision ward. Kuro, everybody going with the uh, same Cassiopeia skin today, apparently the popular one with the tail bling yeah I mean with Zed you're gonna be using that Q2 off uh, farm so much you're not gonna have the time really to get harass on oh Fixer gonna walk into that brush nice knock up Fixer in a lot of trouble here he's gonna go down and pray gets a kill whoops that was a nice that was a big old face check wasn't that it was a giant face check yeah they're gonna try and take blue as a result though so not Ooh, actually yeah. a bad response from KT Rollster but that's Sheen Burn down Fixer awfully quickly. Yeah. Wow. And so they're going to roll into the enemy side blue. Uh, of course. Score. Is that Zoolander? Because he's got blue steel. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was the worst. Uh... I, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be here, well, one more day this week. <laughs> and then back next week. And the week after that. And the week after that as well. So, all right, punishing fans 24-7. Well, Kuro oh, doesn't yeah. know his blue is gone, so score oh, is six. Score. It's just going to recall. Yep. Oh. oh, no blue. Wow, well, I mean. It's going to be annoying. Uh, it was a nice try, especially since, uh, you know, we he didn't necessarily, I suppose, know. How many people are going to be in that top side? So, might as well see if you can set something up. It's not in a position to do anything. And a little bit nervous about that 2v2. So. Mm -hmm. Well, things very even up so far. The blue still, of course, helping the KT rollsterers. But I wonder what's going to happen around this first dragon. Warding. Uh, Pretty adequate for KT at the moment. They're trying to get a little bit more in there, but GE can fight back a bit. They have this. Uh, They're going for it. Starting nope, at least. Yet. I mean, they see Gorilla right there. There is a ward in the Dragon Pit. Score took a lot of damage, yeah, actually. They did. They're committed. Now, can GE respond? Lee is there. Prey can come up as well. Gorilla there. I think GE could contest this, right? Getting a bit low. Here comes Lee. There's a knockup. Arrow dodges it with that spell shield. Teleport's coming in for both top laners right now, but GE, a little bit better angle on it. They're going to try to go in on the mid laner now. Nagne to the back lines on to Kuro. Kuro trying to stay safe. Dragon getting lower. It's going to be taken by GE. Meanwhile, stun used for score. Can KT get some kills out of this? Everybody's still up right now. Ignite used on Nagne already. Gorilla trapped in the pit. But trading your support for the Dragon isn't the worst thing ever. And so in the end, GE uh, takes that one. Wow, really actually quite surprising that GE managed to get that considering yeah. that their jungler was trapped behind the pit off busy being death marked. 
I think it was just the pressure from Prey. He was just yeah. so scary walking up lane like that. Yeah, they barely got it in the end anyway, just yep. trying to burst it down as hard as they could. But KT, I think, lost sight of the prize right there, going for the kill instead. Yeah, you, you can't do that against GE Tigers as well. Only in Prey. Taking this opportunity to move up, Fixer. Oh no, it's another bush check and it's another dead Annie. Potentially, Prey Seeker blocked by Arrow. Nice play and Prey can't quite get the range. Wow, that was close. I didn't think he had the mana for the ult either. Oh it yeah, you're quite, right. Quite, quite low, so just couldn't quite pull it. But Fixer, Whoops. wow, needs to, needs to check his face checks right there. That's the second time he's found a Rek'Sai in a brush. Yeah, and, and Pretty advertently, and he's not level six yet, so. Well, face checking with Annie is very different from face checking <laughs> with Thresh as well, too. If you face check with Annie, you have no response, really, especially if you have no stun, or Thresh you can play and all that good stuff. Yeah, you also are a tank here, so that exactly. helps yeah. a lot in terms of being forgiving for mistakes, but yep. you know, that was really, really a narrow escape from Fixer. Well, and we don't usually see GE do those kind of brush hide things like they just did, too, so I think maybe seeing a little bit of a weakness on the KT side, something they can possibly punish. At this point, I'd be pretty confident in punishing Fixer. Yep. He's well, just going to face check every bush relentlessly on the bottom side of the map. He had a nice play for first blood, but we've just seen that if he's not on that thresh, he's so inconsistent. He can make plays, but he'll also make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, his Jana ults were really off in that yeah. first game. Yeah. And it, you know, when he plays Leona, he's able to you know make picks here and there. I've, I've got a feeling it's going to be very similar to how we're going to see this anti workout. He's going to make plays. But he's going to get caught a lot. Nogne trying to go in on Kuro. Here's score. The flash. A lot of damage onto Kuro. There goes him. Lee down as well. Nice gank from KT. Fixer showing up there as well. Score just getting in the middle of everything there. And again, be careful. Uh, GE, KT's been playing so aggressively on the map in these last couple of games that they've been able to take advantages just by striking first, basically. They yeah. have a man advantage at seemingly every time. Fixer is six. Prey is in the bottom lane alone. Oh, Tibber's on to Prey. Going to lock him up under that turret. Fixer in a little bit of trouble. There's a knockup. It might keep him alive, and it does. Fixer makes it out. There's those plays we were talking about. He can certainly make them. He's got the mechanical skill. Wow, Prey that again, that is two deaths that Fixer has just so narrowly avoided. Yeah. This could be a very different game. Had he given up a couple of extra kills, but oh, instead Smeb. escaping Smeb. narrowly. Smeb a bit low. He's got his ult, he's got flash, but this is still kind of dangerous. Someday going in on him now up in the top lane. Yeah, somebody doesn't have an AP though, so yeah. just, uh, Smeb just ults himself and gets out. Should be okay. We're not even gonna, there we go. Gonna look now. Yep, Smeb not too concerned. Annie now coming up to the top side. Fixer wants to continue to make plays, wants to see if he can find a stun right here. Nogne hasn't been freed up from the mid lane, but does have a couple of kills. I mean, this is really dangerous for yeah, GE. It is. Well, two kills on Arrow as well. Kills on all the right people right now. Well, big lead for KT early. Yep. And Score doing what Score does best, just being there every time. He's got 100% contribution for each kill. Right, he's he's consistently been in the top, very top of the kill contribution percentages for his team yep. throughout this season and, and in the league, actually. He's still he, top he, in the league right now. Yeah, he led, and he's been leading for this entire season pretty much, so he's been instrumental to his team's success. He, yeah. His team may not have done well, but Score individually has made oh, the play. Oh, flash engage onto Smeb. Smeb, not even time to flash away. And another kill. Fixer didn't get there. Why but would you stay? You're low. I you know. don't have your ultimate. You have teleport available. I mean, yeah, you sure you want to save it for that dragon that's coming up, but at the same time, now the onus is on him. He didn't use the TP for that, so can he use it effectively at the dragon? Only arrow left in the bottom side, though, so a hard push coming in, but... You know, they didn't get a lot of damage done on that turret, though. Yeah, wave clear, very good for this Sivir, even with the Kog'Maw with the Sheen. You can't quite get it down yet, and it's going to take another few minutes for this composition from GE to really come online, and KT has the edge they need at this point in time to get a snowball right here. I mean, the one nice thing for GE is that they actually, at least they have the breathing room to give up this next dragon. They don't need to really worry about yeah. contesting it. They just need to worry about farming and Getting some items. Getting some power, because right now there's not a lot. 
Yeah, they also pick champions, especially in mid and bot, that really do need a lot of farm. You have to get that farm. You have to get those stacks onto Cassiopeia in order for her to be effective. And Kog'Maw yep. and Cassio, those big late game threats, but you have to be able to get there first. I don't even know if, even if GE has like good vision, has a position if they should try to fight this dragon. I think they need to let this go. What do you think? Maybe, well, we'll see how they decide to move right now. Vision really good for KT. And yeah, it's so dangerous. For a team that's been so prolific in warding all season long, GE Tigers just not getting them in the right place at the right time this series. Not really any of the three games, honestly. Well, Sunday right. getting a bunch of free autos off the yes, turret. Oh, yeah. Lulu was just kind of wandering around the side of the map. They want to make a play. I yep. don't know if they can actually kill Someday, though. They're going to try. He doesn't have Flash. There's a knockup. Someday, really low, goes Twisted Advance onto Smeb. Into the river now. He's at least leading GE on a merry chase as KT takes another dragon, or takes her first dragon, rather. Someday, very, very low. And here comes Nagne and Fixer. This could turn around. Someday, still alive. Twisted Advance comes in for the kill on Lee. Wow, they got dragon walked all the way up to top lane. Got a kill there, got the bottom turret. What in the world? This could not be going worse for the GE Tigers. Yeah, and I mean, that's an extremely unlikely gank to be effective. Someday yeah. has the cowl already. Yeah. So it's not really a whole lot you can do. Prey is just going to maybe kill Arrow, though. Oh, uh, well, wow, well, they both, both summoners, actually. Got to turn oh, it around, however. Teleport coming in for Someday. That was a little bit overeager. So teleport out of the way now, at least. Force Prey's Flash, though. Yeah, but it's good to see KT be aggressive. That's okay. I don't know why you gank top lane right here. This is just so unlikely to be successful, and you, they gave them so much time to respond as excellent, well. Excellent, excellent Flash Tibbers from Fixer, too, there. Really saved Someday's life. He was like one auto from death. And, yeah, and that's another very near death from KT that just doesn't happen. It's not GE's day in terms of these little, little advantages. Yeah. And now KT can split push. With this Zed. Oh, hello. Well, Fixer coming up again. Score trying to bait Smeb back, but not going to work out. Not this time. All right, so Prey has his Trinity Force, but still pretty low damage on the team. Yeah, 4.5k gold behind it. Who's going to stop the Zed at this point, too? Yeah. You have a lot of immobile champions like Cassiopeia and Kogma, who he is going to be able to abuse. Not a lot of armor. Uh, Nogde needs to start getting into a side lane, though. Uh, wants that last whisper, but uh, he needs to start putting some more pressure on. I guess he's just going to do it in mid lane because no one is there right now to save this tower. Well, Lee is there, but Nogne just uses that Living Shadow to get away. Pokes Lee pretty heavily someday. <laughs> he's what? Like, Pardon me, coming through. Don't worry about me. <laughs> okay. I decided to show up. It's like, hey. I think he saw Kuro coming in and decided that maybe yeah. this wasn't the best time to attempt to kill Rek'Sai, but. Or there was some action in mid. Some days there. Yeah, killing that Rift Scuttler helps out a bit. No dragon for a while, but he'll be able to get a little bit more vision in case Arrow wants to push up that lane, but he's gonna go top. That's the only outer turret that really, actually, I don't know if that has a whole lot of help left. We'll see. Nogne moving back down towards mid, but Kuro's back. Yeah, they have to hold on to these towers right now. They should have enough defensive capabilities to do it, enough wave clear, but this is a really important moment for GE in this game. And KT, they swap appropriately, may be able to make something out of it. I mean, this Maokai is really strong and can just clear the wave. Smeb not able to harass very effectively against Maokai right now. And there's always the threat with these deep wards in the jungle that Maokai's just gonna push up the wave and walk mid and just dive mid yeah. on Nakuro. He comes from behind like he did again with that Righteous Glory and him and Zed will easily be able to clean up this Cassiopeia. So super dangerous moment right here. Someday has to be stopped from walking into the mid lane. I don't think Someday can be stopped at all at this point. It's gonna be very hard to kill this Maokai from here on out. Well, fortunately, you have two late game hyper carries, so. That's there, the only hope. Uh, there is there is a, a ray of hope at this point, but yes, yeah, Sunday yeah. is quite strong. It has a bit Smeb's game tonight. And, you know, it's something that uh, GE Tigers did against WE as well when they 
got behind in that third game. They started inexplicably ganking Smeb's lane for apparently no reason when it had a very low chance of success. It's true. And that actually, again, set them further behind because they committed very awkwardly to these desperate ganks. And I don't know what it is about this team, but that's the second time in a game three where we've seen them do that, and it cost them way more than they've gained. It's interesting. These are vital things to know, too, if you're going to face GE Tigers in the playoffs. Wait until they fall behind early and then just camp top lane because you know that's where they're going to go. Even Apparently. if there's a super tank that you, they can't kill up there with their utility mage. It's starting to look that way. It seems like a GE struggles against Maokai specifically sometimes, too. I mean, who doesn't these days? But <laughs> it's the reason it was banned. Yeah, but ganking that top lane round, it's a bit silly. Wow, the set is so strong right now. KT has to do something with it before everybody gets too much, too many Zonias and QSSs and all that other stuff. Right. Well, that's a big, that's kind of the one big danger is that KT, you know, a team that's struggled a bit in closing out games, not so much with this type of composition, but has a lot in the past overall. You know, can they close out this vital game now to be the only team so far to win a match against the GE Tigers? It'd be interesting. I don't think they're going to make much of a play at this Dragon at the moment. They have to protect that top tier one. They can't lose a tower and Dragon right now. That would be pretty disastrous, but it looks like Prey will hop back up into the top side in time. Does have a Bilgewater Cutlass. Arrow just pushing out into the bottom, help them secure that Dragon as much as possible. So GE looks like another Dragon they have to give up. And man, that first one means so much for them right now. It bought them so much time. Yeah, really. Wow, they're going to lose them a enough. tier two. Yeah, they might lose their top laner as well. Smeb flashes out, but that's a stun from Annie, and he is going to get blown up. Fixer right there for the catch. Pretty easy kill, honestly. I yep. mean, the thing for GE, they had no wards in bottom side jungle, and they rode the wave right into a dive. So obviously, yeah. you see a lot of people missing on the map. Pretty predictable play from KT, but Lee not there. Or to try and turn it around. Ooh, nice smite. Chilling smite, I guess, on the yeah. arrow. Making his presence felt, I guess. All right. I don't know. Here's the threat now. Timbers is still up, so that's going to cause Kuro to back right off from the mid lane. Oh, they're going to get a turret. The first turret of the game. Meanwhile, the Dragon being taken again by KT. And this would be their second, I believe. GE trying to push up mid lane. Not gonna get it. I mean, Zed has to go into a side lane now. They, this whole Zed mid nonsense that's going on has been yeah. happening for far too long. Sibra is perfectly capable of holding the mid lane and they have to apply more pressure in that fashion. Still nobody top. And that's that's maybe a, just a free turret for Maokai, it is. Wow, okay. GE trying to make it as hard for themselves as possible. Well, they're getting past the point of no return right now, honestly. Yeah. I mean, at this point, if you're GE Tigers, right, you just want to sit by your tier twos and farm. You just want to wait and farm and farm and farm. Yep. And then if you can keep people from dying, you can come back with a super late game. But if GE wins this, this is going to go to like 50 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Almost certainly. But like I said, that first dragon going to GE actually is going to end up being huge because of how much time it buys them. And uh, the QSS first build onto John against Annie. We've seen Gorilla do this in the past. It has been very, very effective. Just able to cleanse off the Tibbers and then Monsoon to prevent any follow-up. And he has to be able to get the Monsoon off against the composition that he's dealing with. But Annie Sejuani really terrifying in terms of that AOE crowd control. Seriously, yeah. That's a lot of stun if you can land it successively. If you can chain it correctly. Wow, Kuro really scared this game. Went Seraphs <laughs> right after uh, finishing that Zonia's Hourglass, so a lot of shields. Ways to deal with Zed coming in. Nagne maybe finally heading into bottom side. Although there's no tower up there right now. I mean, I think he would be doing better against Smeb in top, honestly. It'll be really hard for him to actually kill an inhibitor turret 
at this early stage of this game. Well, nothing satisfies you, does it, Mario Cristo? Right, go top. Finally down. goes into a side lane. It's the wrong one. <laughs> I see. Hey, get a tower. That's what he's built for. And no armor on Lulu, so. Oh, man, he's built for stealth assassinations, not hitting buildings until they fall over. That would be a bit more of a challenge to get a stealth assassination onto Kuro, considering his build. God, that so. mid tower is so low right now. Yeah, they can just kind of walk up and kill it as soon as GE backs off. Uh, score, I think, really smart to get the early Aegis this game. We talked about that coming in, but because of Kog'Maw's mixed damage too, that does them so many favors. You know, the thing is, is even though GE is really far behind, 6,000 gold right now and, you know, a considerable amount of map control as well, if it does go to the super late game, oh, Gorilla really getting poked hard. If it does go to the super late game, you just can't imagine a team like GE losing in that situation against a team like KT that has well, seemed so indecisive. I feel yeah. like if it gets to that point, KT's just going to get too flustered. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just also the team compositions that we've got well, that here. Too. Yeah, just the more QSS speaking, they come out. It's, yeah. Just speaking purely about the players, though, yep. you know? Oh, on to Gorilla they go. He's going to go ahead and cleanse oh, his way wow. out of that. Uh, because he had the QSS, he yep. actually blew Sivir ult right there as well. So Very two nice. ults just for the QSS active. Didn't even have to use Monsoon. Really nicely done. Well, we've been seeing a lot of fast QSSs on Janna against these types of compositions, and, and this is why you need it, you know? Yeah, Gorilla really the one that innovate that build as well. So yep. now GE will feel more confident about pushing early on right here. Lee is going to find a pink ward right there someday. It's a little bit of a crit, but not too, too much damage. Oh, nope, they're going to go in onto Lee a little bit. Score coming over the wall for that one. Flashes used. Tibbers down onto Gorilla. He's in trouble. Flashes away himself to his advance. Down onto Kuro. There's a wild growth, though. GE trying to turn it around. Prey untouched so far. Fixer gets taken down by Kuro. He's going to use that Zonius. Man, is Prey getting a lot of damage done. Oh, but now the big engage onto Prey. Nagne coming in with that death mark as well. As someday, Prey still lives through it all. KT extremely low health right now. But this one has been fought to a bit of a stalemate. Oh, no, one and as it, they're going to keep sieging right now. And that was I the one so. fight that KT couldn't take. Why would you take that? Can the you really siege? GE Tigers has no minions. They're going to have to wait a long time. Well, th but there's nobody up else on the side. They have to make it back right now. There's only 50% uh, turret so. left. There is a Trinity Forest. There's the TP, but they forced a TP at the very least out of it. So now yeah. they have TP advantage. That's the fight you don't want to fight if you're KT. Yeah. You have your ults down. You need those. And then Fixer didn't do a great job with his Tibbers either. So let's take a look at this one again. So he Flash. flashes, uh. only hits Gorilla. But the thing is, Gorilla flashes immediately. Kuro in for the ultimate. And then there's just no more CC. There's no more follow-up. This is the perfect fight for GE. Kuro gets that wild growth, manages to take out Fixer, gets the Zonias off as well. And then Prey, he's just so tanky right here able to survive through nearly everything while constantly auto-attacking. Like, it doesn't get much better for GE than to fight when two of those ults are down. And yep. they only got traded, what, one for one for that. But even so, that's going to drag out this game in a way that is good for the GE Tigers. Oh, very good, yeah. Dragon coming up in about 10 seconds now. And that was that was a classic Juggermaw fight right there where Prey is so safe and gets so much damage in on the other team. I mean, that was a very... There, that was very close to GE just getting an ace with how low KT got there. And here we go, Prey coming in. Look at that poke on the Fixer. That speed on that Kog'Maw from the Whimsy, the Shields. Look at that, and this should be, we'll see if they can get the turret. Oh, they're sticking around. Prey can't quite do it, one auto away. And trying to find a flank with the Zed right now. Yeah, they don't want to give up too much too with this Dragon alive now. Nagne, ooh, lurking in the shadows. He's he not going to be able to get the there. Too. He's not going to be able to get there without being seen, though. You can see there are really good pl uh, flank wards for GE as yeah. they continue the assault. They force the wow. Sivir to be blown defensively. Oh, man. Oh, and nice whirlwind to stop the engage. The ult from Sejuani more or less wasted. Someday still gets a kill on the Lee anyway, but could have been a lot worse. GE backs away. Have they lost this dragon, though? Well, Lee is the least valuable member of this team to lose, oh, yeah. so. It's like they will lose the dragon, but they're going to get the tower for it. Yeah, it's still only the third dragon. It does put more pressure on, but things could be worse. It is still an 8,000 gold lead for the for KT Rolster. That turret still 
Still is up. Arrow got back in the nick of time. Yep. Unless you don't want to be standing out front there trying to block off, ward off those minions if you're Maokai up against yeah. this Kog'Maw. Oh, the Last Whisper is coming in real soon. Well, the thing is, is that the damage that GE Tigers are doing in this team fight is only going to keep going up. Correct. So with that type of disengage that the GE showed in that last fight, KT is going to pay for it more each time it doesn't right, work. right, they're coming after Someday. They're yeah. going to get him. He's, he's pretty tanky, but that's a three for one. Someday coming back in. And Fixer trying to get there in time, but it's not going to work. There's a kill for Kuro, even getting that on probably the person you want it the most on right now. Yep, absolutely. So uh, this is turning around for GE. Yes, you see this large gold deficit, but these, I mean, Cassiopeia and Gogma are starting to get rolling right here. Yep. And GE may have turtled their way into uh, into the late game successfully. Well, that was that's kind of the intent, isn't it? Turtle your way to success with the Juggermaw. Yeah. <laughs> so, three dragons for KT, but all the dragons in the world won't matter if you're not able to actually get in and do damage to the carries on the other team. I mean, Nogme still can slip push too, so. Yes, he can. They're Several going. use. There's a teleport coming in. Timbers on to Prey. Prey caught completely, and that is not a fight GE wants now. Everyone on KT just jumping all over. Kuro goes down. That's what can happen if your positioning is not the best. You can't be there while Lulu is not there. You yeah. have to have Lulu with the composition in order for Ooh, this to work. So we are going to get a little bit of a pause right now. All right. But that was a very nice engage from KT. Lulu in the bottom side. And oh, Curl leaves the game. Something going on there. Yeah, just really, really greedy. You'll get that tower eventually. What you don't want to do is give them even more of a snowball and try yeah. and hand over a Baron, which can really force the hand of GE. Yeah, Kuro's ult was unused in that fight. Just kind of, with everything they used on Prey, it's kind of a bit surprising that he didn't get that off in time. And it looks like it is an issue with his computer too. Interesting. Well. I'm pretty sure that fight goes the same way, even if he does get his ultimate well, off. But with Prey out of the way, there's not going to be a lot Kuro can do, even if he does get the ult off. Since as soon as it ends, he will just be utterly destroyed <laughs> like we saw him utterly destroyed. Wow, so uh, huh. Frozen Art on a Sunday now, too. It's really important that Prey gets this last Whisper yeah. as soon as possible. We are going to be starting right back into the game. Well, you'd imagine that Thornmail is coming soon after for some day as well too, right? Not good for Prey. And KT immediately going over to that Baron and with three members of GE down, this is gonna be an easy one to take. Really nothing at all they can do. Overextending yep. in the mid side, not respecting the teleport engage and the speed at which KT can get in on them. I mean, between Talisman and on the hunt, you're gonna have a rough time. Yes, you are. All right, well, turn the bot lane taken. So GE able to get one objective at least before having to fall back to defend this Baron push from KT. Well, it will be a miracle now if GE wins. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yeah, Randuin's almost done for score as well. And Pixar, you know, after those first early face checks, he's really shown up this game. Yeah, he's been making a lot of nice plays. But I think really Score has done a remarkable job tonight as well. Yep. Especially this game. He was in the right place, got the good counter ganks off. Going into today's match, I believe he was still 79% kill contribution, which is not his peak, but still really high. His peak was really like 85, high. no joke. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He's man. had so many, especially early in this season. Well, um, he's had to carry this team on his shoulders basically the entire season long. Right. It's only recently that they it, they started to pick it up. First it was Nogne picking it up, and still Someday and, and Arrow kind of dying in the side lanes or underperforming. But yeah. recently they have been coming together, at least in terms of their laning phase well, and it's only been in the... Oh, well, there we go, trying to come in, yep. Oh, they wasted Prey the old. backs away, and that is not the type of engage. They'll still get the tier two. They still push the GE Tigers back. But you're right, cooldown's down. A little bit for KT anyway. 
don't know if they needed to commit quite that hard right there for that. Not for a tier two, no. Yeah, you probably could just chase them off with the Sivir ult and that'll be enough. Yeah. Because now there's not, there's no longer that threat when it comes to taking the next tier two. No talisman either. Yep. I think that no righteous glory either. Yeah, I think this is going to be the end of this siege now. They yeah. they overcommitted. Of course, they could have gotten an inhibitor with a kill, but that's the risk you take. Well, they might be able to get this tier two. A lot of damage on the score. Ooh, and that that is Prey doing what Prey does. Oh, and they're going to come back in. Prey walked a little bit too far forward, but they keep him alive with the shields. The turret does go down. Lee flashing out of there. Someday flash to his advance onto Lee. They still want kills. KT diving this turret. Arrow picks one up. But Prey answers right back with a kill onto Someday. Literally, well, very little damage. I almost used literally incorrectly there. Very <laughs> little damage. Literally very little damage done to that turret. There we go. Oh, wow. Actually, Someday went for the second Aegis right here. I really huh. think that's a good idea. Interesting. Uh, stacking up again. That MR is effective against the Kog'Maw. Uh, due to the nature of Bioarcane Barrage, so. Yep. Should be the end of the Baron push, too. Smed looks like he'll be going into an hourglass next. Yeah. A little bit of survivability. Man. GE Tigers, 12,000 gold down. We have not seen this that often. No, it if is. Ever. It is surprising how similarly this game looks to their game three match against WE at IEM, though. Yeah. A big early deficit. Poor choice of ganking targets by Lee. Uh, a little bit of desperation. Not coordinated in the skirmishes early on. And kind of uh, messing around in the first two games, too. Huh. Well, they got nothing to play for here, so. Exactly. It doesn't hurt them in this tournament. But uh, a habit you don't want to carry into semifinals of other tournaments in the future. This should be a fourth dragon with no issue at all for KT. And it will be. So KT poised to hand uh, the GE Tigers their first loss of the season, their first match loss of the season. Uh, KT once again showing that they are just very strong when they can straight up run at you. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they have been outplaying in the last couple of games GE in these skirmishes, so. Yeah, they have. As long as KT stays away from it's double AD compositions and Zareth and poke comps. Basically every other comp but the one they're running right <laughs> now. <laughs> but they seem to have enough options in terms of champions to run this comp that it's really hard to deal with it now. Yeah, they have a little bit of variation in there, but it's it's a very distinctive style for this team, but their champion pools right now at least seem to be yeah, okay. Honestly, I kind of wonder uh, if Karthus would have been a better pick against this this game, because mm. that's something that would be very difficult for them to all in. Well, you can imagine Kuro on a lot of other champions that he would do much better on. You know, what about the, the Zareth? The Zareth was open this game. Yeah, it's all right. Could have gone for it. That would be pretty, pretty good, good poke with Prey. Yeah, it's dangerous, though, with, with, with Zed. Zed, yes, of course. Not sure they're gonna be actually be able to crack this base though for a little bit. Oh, they're going oh, for it. Oh yeah, they're diving way in on the prey. I don't nice think Prey was job. expecting that. And this is what KT does best: hard engage, and they look caught at, prey. Look at how well they did that though. They yeah. went on to prey while Score threw his ultimate on a Lulu, so Lulu couldn't use abilities on Beautiful. it. Beautiful. That was a very nice engage from KT. They knew exactly how they had to plan that one out. Yep. That equals an easy inhibitor. Yeah, that was beautiful. Really well done. That's that's what you have to do. You have to make sure you get your crowd control onto the Lulu. And with the lead they have, easily able to burst down Prey, even through that QSS. Man, when you combine those active items with the Siveralt, you move so fast as a team. Prey just like could not react fast enough. Yeah, scary. I, I think yeah. that banning the Siveralt was pretty important to the way that KT's been playing in their last couple of games tonight. Probably more important to get rid of than the LeBlanc, especially since we know that Kuro is a strong LeBlanc player himself. So right to score for Fixer, but the manor banner of command for someday. <laughs> Picked up. It's the manor banner. 
Well, it will I'd be love it. once they get Baron again. It will be really hard for GE to stop their CJ. It's useful, but you, you got to think maybe probably wouldn't be picking that up if it wasn't against the GE Tigers. No, I actually think it's the best choice right here, legitimately. Really? Well, you can build lock it, but all right. If you're already going to get the the second Aegis, which I understand. They're going to try to go Holy. and fix their flashes. Wow, what an engage. That was a fast Annie, but GE trying to turn around. Prey still alive. The Juggermaw is doing work. That's a double kill now for Fixer and KT. May have overstepped. Someday with the kill, Lee in a lot of trouble. Gets the knockup, gets taken out. Two kills on each side. GE Tigers ready for that one, and Arrow and Fixer pay for it. Yeah, Kuro turned that around really nicely. Prey also oh, man. managed to get the QSS off on the death mark as it came in. So. Yep lives just with a sliver of health at the end of that engagement, but that's going to delay KT's ability to take the Baron. KT should not have engaged right there. They should have just gone for Baron and then used the, the banner to siege with. That's the safest play. The thing is, is if they had lost like Nagne, then that would have been a Baron potential for uh, GE Tigers as well. Yeah, could have been dangerous, that's for sure. Yeah. But they're so far ahead that even when they don't have the greatest positioning in the fight, or Kuro's able to do work and turn it around a little bit. That Annie is just hilariously fast, though. <laughs> it's pretty great. But Flash is down for a little while now, so Fixer won't quite have uh, as much engage potential. Prevented Smeb's recall there a moment ago. Yeah, they're still going to find themselves in. Pretty good position right here to at oh, least yeah. attempt to contest this Baron. Whether they will actually be able to pull it off or not is a different story. Well, GE uh, has successfully forced it into the super late game at this point, or into the late, late game. Anyway, Baron for KT. They'll take that one easily. G Tigers with the warding that uh, KT had. GE doesn't really have any opportunity to catch them in the jungle, so they're, they're just going to have to back off and defend. Yep, and one minute until Dragon number five. Seems that like KT will be able to smoothly close this game out. They found that massive gold lead that you need. Yeah, GA for score now. So he'll be coming back. And Prey needs to be a little bit careful. We've seen what kind of engage KT can bring on him again. The big key now is just the flash being down for Andy makes him a little bit safer. Yeah. All the speed items. I'm not sure how safe that makes you, really. <laughs> well, we'll find out right now. Prey trying to get away. He will flash. He will QSS. Deathmark down onto him. There's a nice ult from Gorilla, though. Someday comes in with the Twist Advance. There's a Wild Growth, but it's not going to keep Prey alive, even with all that. The Juggermaw just couldn't take the punishment that KT will deliver a double kill for Nagne. That is going to be the end of that with the Death Timers being the way they are. And KT Rolster. Going to come back in this series after losing game one, winning two in a row. And even though it doesn't really make a difference in Champions Korea right now, they will get the first match win over the GE Tigers. GG. And well played by them in the last two games, reverting yeah. back to their comfortable style after missing out on some power spike timings in the first game. But they showed that they're very good with this haul in. And this is a team that uh, Looked a lot better last week, that's for sure, in spite of some misplays. They're not 100% yet, but they bullied their way through the laning phase tonight, and GE showing that they really can't keep falling so far behind early. Yeah. And expect to their team fighting to bail them out, but well played by KT. They may not have a shot at the playoffs, but they do look better. They do, yeah. And this is, I mean, the bright side for this is that this is looking good for KT going into summer, 